Welcome to the fifth section of the Building Databases with Redis video course. In the previous sections we discussed all the data types that Redis allows us to operate in order to create efficient data storage for specific tasks and needs. In this relatively small section we're going to discuss the publish-subscribe mechanism that is quite unique for database management systems because it is not directly related for storing data but implements a messaging mechanism. In this section we will be experimenting with database design for a chatting application, its architecture and data storage. In this video we won't discuss any application code in order to place more stress on Redis itself. Well, eventually this is a video course on Redis, not on Python. Let's start this video by depicting what we expect from the application. Firstly, it will be an anonymous chat with no authentication. Secondly, it will allow direct messaging between users. And finally, users can enter rooms more than one at a time. So this video we will devote to the discussion of data models based on our experience, knowledge gained from the previous section. The first model is the user model. We have stated that our chatting application won't require any authentication, so basically what we want is just to inform somehow that the user with specific nickname is entering the chat server. The simplest way is to store all users in a user set on server. Storing users that way will require the next operations. First, we use the as is member comment to check if the user with the desired nickname is already registered. Let's type as is member users me. Then, if our nickname is available, we use the as add command, let's type as add users me, in order to register ourselves. The last thing we need is to unregister ourselves with the srem command when leaving the chat server. So finally, we type srem users me. This comments flow is the basis for our storage. While we don't have any security considerations for the chat application, such an organization of user model seems to be simple and great, with everything stored in one Redis set. Now let's move to how must we store messages. Obviously, there are three mandatory fields for messages message body, message author, and the room in which the message was published. When talking about queries, messages that are stored in Redis can support retrieving communication history. Thus, we can only have one type of query which receives some portion of messages either for the room or for direct communication between two clients. For that, we can store messages in lists on compound keys which are similar to m colon room colon room name or m colon direct colon user1 colon user2. This list is nice because on one hand it helps us to preserve the messages order and allows the user to receive either all messages or some portion of them. The only thing we didn't implement here is authoring. Like we use compound strings for keys, we can also use compound strings for values, so our message will look like this, author colon message. That's all on messages. And at this point we are ready to move on to having users and message data storages implemented. As you can see, storages are extremely simple and only minimal number of queries for common chatting application tasks is required. So we are ready to move to the next video in which we will learn how to perform messaging itself using built-in Redis Publish Subscribe mechanism.